Today, you're gonna to learn about HTTP status code 429, what it is, why it's important, and what to do about it. We're also gonna do a high-level overview on HTTP protocol basics and kinda of how they make up the internet and why that's important to all of your status codes. I'm Tommy Griffith with clickminded.com. Let's get going. So before we jump into 429s, I wanna do a brief high-level overview of HTTP protocols and how they work. The internet is made up really of two core things, and that's clients and servers, right? So you have clients, web clients, that's your browser, right? Maybe it's Chrome, maybe it's Firefox, maybe it's Safari. If you're a godforsaken human being, maybe it's Internet Explorer. But if you're, <laughs> you're usually accessing the internet through one of these clients, right? Whenever you request a website, you're usually making a request from a web server. You make a request and the server responds. That's happening every single time you're clicking a link. You make this request using what we call the HTTP protocol. Okay, so protocols are really just standards that everyone on the internet has agreed to. It's no different than English or Spanish or Chinese. It's a language that we've all agreed to, right? So a client makes a request to the server, what happens next? Status codes let us know whether the request was a success, a failure, or something in between, right? That's what an HTTP status code is. Okay, so let's jump into each one of these next. So the 100 block, these are informational requests. Uh, the 200 block, those are successful requests. The 300 block are gonna be for redirects, redirection. 400 block will be for client errors and 500 block will be for server errors. 400 block are for client errors, right? That means the page wasn't found, something is wrong with the request, right? So whatever is happening on the client side is the issue. Right, a 400 might be a bad request, a 401 unauthorized, a 403 forbidden. We're gonna talk about the most important ones a little bit later, but the basic idea here is that any, any status code that comes in as a 400 is a client error. Okay, HTTP status code 429, too many requests. So let's talk a little, little bit about this one. So a 429 means that the user, the client side, remember this is a, a 400, so it's a client side error. The user has sent too many requests in a given amount of time. This is also colloquially known as rate limiting, right? So be very careful when you're, uh, when you're looking at your own server logs, be very careful of rate limiting search engines. You almost never wanna do this. A lot of, uh, especially like infra related engineers or kind of DevOps, uh, engineers, they often look at requests and they look at it agnostic of the user agent and they just say, we don't want uh, to let any one user request too many times from us because of DDoS protection, right? Distributed denial of service. And so what they do is they rate limit uh, either based on IP or based on user agent or whatever. Sometimes they accidentally rate limit Googlebot or other search engines. This is a bad idea. You're telling Google to not come to your website. It's not great. In general, 429s are kind of the first line of defense, like I mentioned, of uh, distributed denial of service attacks. The basic idea is someone's requesting too much and, this, and, um, and basically they need to be stopped. Google's very famously rate limits people crawling their search results, right? Um, whenever you see CAPTCHAs out in the wild, this is often like kind of a manual bot prevention, uh, first, maybe, maybe first defense rate limiting tactic, right? So um, HTTP status code 429, client side error, it means the user is requesting too much and you need to pump the brakes a little bit and slow down. So that's really it. That's all there is to HTTP status code 429. So I hope that was helpful. If it was useful and if you learned something today, go ahead and click subscribe down below for even more digital marketing tactics and tips from us. If you're watching on YouTube, I'd love a comment. Are you seeing 429s? What do you think about it? Was this guide helpful? How are you gonna deal with your status code 429 problem? Finally, if you want our HTTP status code guide, along with a tool to check all of your, all of your URLs and the status codes for them, go ahead and click that link down below to clickminded.com to get your free downloadable guide now. Thanks a lot.